Okay, so we're going to look at section 2.4 starting tomorrow, which is about writing equations of lines. Um, we're going to go through this presentation. I'm going to give you some examples. We're going to talk about different ways you can write equations of lines, different forms of the equation of a line uh, that are going to be useful depending upon what information you know. Make sure you have the note sheet that I gave you in class out in front of you as we go through these examples. Make sure you're copying the examples I do down as well as some of the equations that I'm going to give you because I'll be checking that tomorrow to make sure that you actually did watch this video. And there's also some practice problems that will appear throughout the video that you'll do on your own and you can pause the video when I tell you to at the specific time for that. Okay, so the first equation that we're going to look at, we've actually seen it already when we were talking about graphing. It's the slope-intercept form. Okay, slope-intercept form, as you may recall, looks like y equals mx plus b. Okay, the m stands for slope, and then the b represents the y-intercept of the line. Okay, so in that first box, you can fill that in. You can make note of what the M and the B stand for. And when we get to some problems where we're looking for a slope and intercept, or we rather we know the slope and the intercept, we can just plug it in and we can go from there. Okay, and that's what the first example says for us to do. It says find the equation of a line whose y-intercept is 5 and has a slope of negative 3. Okay. Well, we've got our B and our M right there. So we'll go into y equals mx plus b form or slope intercept form. Plug in that negative 3 for m, plug in the 5 for b, and just as simple as that, we know that the equation of a line has to be y equals negative 3x plus 5. Okay, now what if though we don't know points per se, but we're given a graph, we're given a line, and we're told what is the equation of that line? Okay, well, we can dissect that picture, and example number 2 is a picture, and we can see what the y-intercept would have to be, and we can count the slope to figure that out. So if you look, we see that the line intercepts the y-axis at negative 2. So we know 0, negative 2 is on the line. So we'll write that down first. The next thing we have to come up with is what the slope of the line is. We talked the end of last week about calculating slopes when we're given a graph. And we talked about the fact that another definition for slope is rise over run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at my y-intercept and I am going to count the rise and the run from the y-intercept to another point on the line. And I think the easiest point to see is the fact that if you look on that graph, we also can see the x-intercept at positive 4. So when we rise, we're rising up 2 from negative 2 to 0. We run from 4 from the y-axis to x equals 4. So in lowest terms, my slope has to be 1 half. So there we go. It's very similar to example 1 with the numbers that we need. We just had to work a little bit to get them this time. So we see that negative 2 is going to be our b, and our m is going to be 1 half. So when we plug in to y equals mx plus b form, we get the equation has to be y equals 1 half x minus 2. Okay? At this point, there's two practice problems at the bottom of the front page. Pause the video. Rewind it if you need to see the examples again. If you need to listen to my explanations again, go for it. Otherwise, give those two problems a try and bring any questions to class tomorrow if you're not quite sure the answer or you're still a little confused. We'll go over the answers at the start of class as well, so you'll have them. But I want to give you an opportunity to try a few on your own without me directly giving you the answers. Okay, so if you want to pause the video now and do that, that would be great. Okay, so now we want to look at a second form. We want to talk about what happens if maybe we don't know the y-intercept and the slope. And if that doesn't happen, if we don't know that information, then we can use what's called the point-slope form. This is not the most graph-friendly form, but it's probably the most user-friendly in terms of writing equations. Because depending on the situation, especially when we start getting into those dreaded word problems that I know you all love so much that I torment you with on a daily basis, a lot of times we're going to have to take data from real-world situations and come up with a linear equation. And very often, that's going to use the point-slope form of the line for that. Okay, it looks like this to fill in on the back side of your notes. y minus y1 equals m times parentheses x minus x1. Now let me tell you what they mean. 
Okay, so the x1 and the y1 represents the coordinates of one point on a line, hence the name point slope. As you'll learn this year, mathematicians, myself included, are very dull people. So the names that we give for things are pretty much indicative of what they're used for. So there's the point in the name point slope, and of course m is the slope in point slope. So if you know a point, you know the slope, this is the form that you can use. Okay. Now we're going to look at example number three. We're told, write the equation of the line which has a slope of 2, so m is 2, and contains the point negative 1, 3. Okay? So from there, we know the point, we know the slope. That's a dead giveaway. That point slope is going to be the better equation to use. So here it is again, y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. I'm going to pause it here and give you a couple seconds. I know I went pretty quick for the last slide in case you didn't get a chance to fill that in for the box. So again, that's point slope form. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take the coordinates of the point and we're going to take the slope of 2 and we're just going to plug them in like we were doing before. So we get y minus 3 equals 2 times the quantity x minus negative 1. Okay, so I'm immediately going to turn that into that double negative into a plus positive 1. Now, that's point slope. The second part of the problem tells you to convert the equation to slope-intercept form. You're going to see that very often in problems where we're dealing with point-slope. The second half is going to be about converting to slope-intercept form. The reason for that is, while this is probably the most user-friendly in terms of plugging in known information, it is not the most user-friendly if down the road we wanted to graph this equation. Because as we've seen when we've done graphing in the class, you need to get that in slope-intercept form. It's a lot faster to draw a graph by hand, or if you wanted to use your graphing calculator, you need to have the equation in slope-intercept form as well to plug it in. So let's do that. Let's convert it to slope-intercept form. It's just a little bit of algebra. First move we're going to do is we're going to distribute our 2 on the right-hand side. So we'll get y minus 3 equals 2x plus 2. And then from there, we isolate our y. And I think everybody would know, but the next step is to add 3 to both sides. And then in slope-intercept form, our line is y equals 2x plus 5. How cool is that? Now, sometimes to be a little annoying, I might not give you the slope. We might not necessarily know what the slope of the line is, but we might know two points on a line. And as we learned from geometry, and as we've talked about briefly when we were graphing lines last week, or earlier this week rather, if you know two points, then there must be exactly one line that touches both of those points. Okay? So that's what example four is about. It tells us to write the equation of a line which goes through the points negative 2, negative 4, and 1, 8. There's a couple steps here. I'm going to break it down step by step of what you have to do. And then it will be just like all the other examples. So first thing, like I said, we don't know the slope. But we do know two points. So like we talked about the end of last week in the last section in Chapter 2, if we know two points, we sure can find that slope. So we're going to use our trusty slope formula that hopefully you have memorized by now. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and we're going to plug in our coordinates, and like we talked about yesterday, or not yesterday, but earlier in the chapter, on Thursday, it doesn't matter which point is my point 1 and which point is point 2. What does matter, however, is that you're consistent in plugging it in. So I'm going to use 1, 8 first. So I'm going to do 8 minus negative 4, over 1 minus negative 2. Now, first thing I'm going to do, that double negative, I hate it, so I'm going to turn it into plus plus, and we get 12 over 3, which is just 4. So, hey, I know the slope now. I know the slope, and I have two points. So since I know point, since I know slope, I'm going to use the point-slope form. Okay. So the next step is putting it all together. You're going to pick one of the two points. Okay. Since both of these points are on the same line, it doesn't matter which point you use. 
You pick one of those points from the problem, and you use the slope that we just calculated of 4, and we plug in the point slope. There it is again, y minus y1 equals m quantity x minus x1. Now, like I said, I'm always a very positive guy. I'm very optimistic. I'm very positive. I have a point there that says two positive numbers. I'm going to use 1, 8. If you chose to use negative 2, negative 4, all power to you. Your steps would look a little different than mine, but what we're going to do is we're going to put this in slope intercept form at the end, and both lines should be the same slope intercept form at the end, regardless of which point you use. So again, using 1, 8, we plug in, we get y minus 8 equals 4, quantity x minus 1. It didn't ask for it, but if we were to convert it to slope intercept form, and here it is again in point slope form, just to refresh your memory. We're going to distribute that 4 first on the right side, and we get y minus 8 equals 4x minus 4. We add 8 to both sides, and we get y equals 4x plus 4. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. There's the equation. And like I said, if you use negative 2, negative 4, you should still get y equals 4x plus 4 with your slope intercept. The point slope is going to look a little different, but the slope intercept should be the same because we're talking about the same line, okay? And like I said, if you were to graph this, that form that's in the box is probably going to be 10 times easier to graph either by hand or with technology. At this point, there are a couple practice problems for you to look at at the bottom of the back side of this sheet. Give those a try. Again, you can pause, rewind, watch this video as many times as you need to before class tomorrow. We're going to look at the practice problems real quick at the beginning of class. I'll take any questions that you have about this video or about this material. But the goal is we're going to continue to apply writing equations of lines in some small groups tomorrow. Okay, so with that, have a good evening, and I will see you in class tomorrow.